Stench of the Unholy Graves is the second full-length album from Infamous. This is a Chile-based death metal band, and one in a fairly traditional vein. If you appreciate uh, the more percussive and dissonant aspects of Immolation, the aggressive death metal of Incantation and its many generations beyond, and uh, you know other Chilean bands like Godless and Dominus Soul, who have a, a little bit of doom in their sound, you'll appreciate where this record goes to start. But really the basis of this record is a combination of Morbid Angel and Incantation-esque uh, effects. And I think if you're a fan of the most recent Crucimentum album, you'll understand that language well enough to appreciate what these guys do. Now, I think they make the Morbid Angel uh, influence pretty obvious up front. And so we'll cut to a song here and uh, just kind of appreciate where that is generationally and what, what, that, uh, what that means for the album as a listening experience. So they definitely hit upon the the sort of outrageous leads of late 90s, early 2000s, Morbid Angel. And the riffs kind of follow, but they're uh, a little bit more diverse than that. They're not quite the technical feat of brutality that like a Diabolic would be, or Centurion even. And the way they developed, this is a little bit more muddy, a little bit more aggressive, sort of like earlier on a Spreklicon Colton, or uh, again, Dominus Zoll in the way that they, they went from the first album to the second easing off some of the doom and just focusing on tight uh, riff craft. And I think that's where this album generally sells itself, is that if you're just a fan of death metal riffs, especially the apex of the 90s going into the 2000s, and sort of just catching the, the edge of the brutal death metal epidemic that would swing up in the early 2000s, you know where this band is coming from in that term. You know, their, their influence are their influences are sort of made pretty obvious in that sense but what they do with it is we have a full album experience it's about 35 minutes that goes from a uh, really intense brutality a big showing up front with bigger songs and then they work into something that is more devastated doomed and uh, dissonant as we edge towards the end of the album so it sort of it goes from a high point and uh, sort of dissolves downward throughout the full listen and that's sort of a sensation that is is pretty interesting for this style of death metal. It's not uncommon or unheard of and, and it, or anything like that. And I don't think this is the most uh, aggressively uh, original style or anything like that. But it is effective and it shows quite a lot of growth in their sound beyond the first record, which was sort of a muddier, more chaotic sound. This is a far less chaotic result that still has all the feeling and aggression that you'd want from the band and where they began. So I think it's a really great follow-up to the first record. It makes a lot of sense how they've improved and where they've improved in terms of just creating rhythms that are exciting and brutal and aggressive, but arrive with more sense and more theatrics to them. So to me, I had a pretty strong connection with that, uh, sort of the visceral side of this record, and I uh, felt like it may, maybe it could have used a burst of chaos here and there just to sort of uh, freak things out a little bit, but overall, it's, it's a solid record, and one that I recommend highly. Uh, go ahead and check it out, and you know, it's, it's, I don't know if they've actually officially released the full digital uh, thing yet but it is uh, it's on the way at least and you can check out at least one song and read my review in the meantime 